Happy February, everybody. Hello and welcome to my channel. This is What A Ghoul Wants. My name is Anna. So if you haven't guessed by all of my decor and the hearts everywhere, today I'm going to be talking about some Valentine's Day themed horror movies. Okay, I've got to take these off though because I cannot do my whole video with those on. Okay, that's better. I hope that my little heart clips are even on each side. I got these at Target in the dollar section and I love them. They're so cute. Also had to have my little heart-shaped mug for this video too. Okay, so what we're talking about today is a movie watch challenge that I have created for the first two weeks of February. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that a ways back in December, I did a 25 days of holiday horror challenge. So for every day leading up to Christmas, I had a movie for each day, one through 25, all different holiday or winter themed movies. So I wanted to do the same thing for Valentine's Day. Because really, what else is there to look forward to in February? I mean, I am a little bit biased because my birthday is in February, so I do look forward to it a little more than the average person. But I also just really like Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day themed horror movies. So these kinds of movies are good for people who both like Valentine's Day and hate Valentine's Day, because for the people who like it, we get a lot of the Valentine's Day aesthetic, all of the hearts and things like that. And for the people who don't like Valentine's Day, we get someone in the movie running around and basically ruining it for everybody involved. So it's kind of a win-win. So this challenge I'm calling 14 Days of Heartbreak Horror, and it's going to be one movie for every day for the first two weeks of February, the first through the 14th. The 14th obviously being Valentine's Day. So I obviously tried to choose movies that were Valentine's Day themed specifically set on Valentine's Day or have the Valentine's Day imagery, the hearts, the Valentine's Day cards, Cupid, and all of that. But there just aren't that many horror movies that are specifically Valentine's Day themed. So I did expand for this list and and this list also includes movies that are just about love in general, either unrequited love or the horrors of love or stories that are very focused on the relationship of a couple in the movie that are also horror. So though all of these movies are not exclusively Valentine's Day, I think they really all fit the theme very well. They all have to do with themes of love and relationships, which, you know, obviously is the basis for Valentine's Day. So that's kind of how I picked the movies on this list. And obviously some of them just have love in the title, which is pretty go-to for a Valentine's Day horror list for sure. So they still really give you the Valentine's Day vibes. So yeah, this challenge is to watch one of these movies a day up until Valentine's Day. And I have them in a certain order, but of course you can switch it up if you want to. But I will just go ahead and go through my list of 14 movies. And what I'm gonna do is read the letterbox description for each of these, and those start with the tagline. So I'm gonna say the tagline and then go into the description of the movie. And then I'll just talk a little bit about the film, whether or not I've seen it. This list is split 50-50. There are seven movies that I have seen and seven that I have not. So let's go ahead and start with number one on my 14 days of heartbreak horror list. And that is My Bloody Valentine or My Bloody Valentine 3D from 2009. He's going to break your heart. 10 years ago, a tragedy changed the town of Harmony forever. Tom Hanniger, an inexperienced coal miner, caused an accident in the tunnels that trapped and killed five men and sent the only survivor, Harry Warden, into a permanent coma. But Harry Warden wanted revenge. Exactly one year later, on Valentine's Day, he woke up and brutally murdered 22 people with a pickaxe before being killed. So I actually haven't seen this one. I don't know how I haven't watched this movie yet because I really love the original My Bloody Valentine and this one came out when I was in high school. It was like the perfect age for me to see it and I just never saw it for some reason but I am so excited to be watching it for the first time on the 1st of February. I wanted to kind of bookend my list with my Bloody Valentine's movies so just a little hint for what number one is going to be but probably no surprise to anyone there. So I know that this movie stars early 2000s heartthrob Jensen Ackles so I really like him. I am excited to see him in another horror property and from the stills and pictures from the movie that I have seen it looks like it's going to live up to its name. They look pretty brutal, pretty gory, pretty bloody. 
So I'm very interested to see how extreme they go with the gore and how it compares to the original. The original really isn't like super bloody by any means, but it sounds like the premise and the story are pretty much the same. So I'm just interested to see what they do differently and how it plays out. So this is one that I'm very excited to be watching for the first time. Number two is Lover's Lane from 2000. Don't get hooked. A man with a hook for a hand escapes from a mental institution to go after the children of his previous victims. Now I had not even heard of this movie before looking up films for this list and I was surprised to have not heard of it because I believe it is Anna Ferris's first ever movie role or one of her very first movie roles so she's very young in this film and I just don't really hear anybody talking about it. I did realize after making this list I looked up to see where it was streaming and it's not streaming anywhere. You can't even rent it on like Amazon Prime or anything like that so I actually bought this movie on DVD and I should be getting it very very soon so I am really sorry for anybody who does want to watch this and doesn't want to buy the DVD but I don't know any other way to watch it. Uh, if you do, please comment below, but I couldn't find it anywhere. It really reminds me just in the description and the time period of Urban Legend from 1998 because they go into the whole story about the guy with the hooked hand. It's a very common and popular urban legend. A guy and a girl and they're parked out in the woods. The guy steps out and the girl starts to hear these scratching noises. It's her dead boyfriend hung from a tree. And this kind of just sounds like they expound on that even more in and really dive into the killer's history or, you know, go into the backstory more than they did in Urban Legends. So yeah, I am very interested to see it. I think it's probably gonna be a pretty cheesy early 2000s slasher, pretty standard, but I guess I'll just have to wait and see and report back to you guys because it just seems like not many people will be able to watch this film. But also please let me know if you have seen it or have heard of it because I really have not heard anyone talk about this movie at all. So maybe it just really is really bad <laughs> and that's why nobody talks about it. But but yeah, it's still one that I am excited to see. Moving on to number three, and number three is Pontypool from 2008. Shut up or die. When disc jockey Grant Mazzy reports to his basement radio station in the Canadian town of Pontypool, he thinks it's just another day at work. But when he hears reports of a virus that turns people into zombies, Mazzy barricades himself in the radio booth and tries to figure out a way to warn his listeners about the virus and its unlikely mode of transmission. This is another one that I have not seen yet, and it is set on Valentine's Day. So I don't really know how that plays into the plot. From the description, it sounds like I don't know, maybe the transmission happens through like kissing or something to do with, you know, physical touch because it's on Valentine's Day. I have no idea. I'm totally just speculating. But this is one that I think is pretty underground, but the people who have seen it really like it a lot. And I just really like Canadian horror. And I think it's very interesting that My Bloody Valentine, the original is a Canadian movie focused on Valentine's Day. And so is Pontypool. So I really love that Canadian cinema is doing holiday themed horror movies like this. I love it. So this is one, again, that I am very pumped to see for the first time, and my hopes are pretty high for this one. Even though zombie movies aren't generally my thing, the premise just sounds super interesting, and so I'm really excited to see how it plays out and how it's different from other zombie movies. Number four is Audition from 1999. She always gets a part. Seven years after the death of his wife, company executive Aoyama is invited to sit in on auditions for an actress. Leafing through the resumes in advance, his eye is caught by Yamazaki Asami, a striking young woman with ballet training. Now that description does not sound like a horror movie at all. It just basically goes through the beginning parts of the plot. So it sounds just like a drama. And the first part of the movie is really like a drama. This one is definitely a slow burn, but Asami is one of the most memorable female villains in horror in my opinion. This movie definitely has the themes of infatuation and love and obsession and lust. So all those things are wrapped up into this story which it's very exemplary of Japanese horror in my opinion. It's just a masterpiece by Takashi Miike, the director. So this is one that is not Valentine's Day related specifically, but I definitely think it fits in with the themes of love and obsession and all of that. So this is one that if you haven't watched it yet, this is a perfect excuse to watch it. Number five is Ready or Not from 2019. In-laws can be murder. A bride's wedding night takes a sinister turn when her eccentric new in-laws 
force her to take part in a terrifying game. This movie is so much fun. I saw it for the first time, I think last year, and I really liked it a lot. And you have the central plot line of this woman, Samara Weaving, getting married. So therein is the love aspect. But the heartbreak comes later when she realizes that her new husband's family is not what she expects. And this is a movie that I think really balances the horror and the comedy very well. It's just a fun watch. It's a fun ride. And it's one that I am very excited to rewatch again. Plus, Adam Brody's in it, which I love him. He's kind of like an underrated horror actor. I love him in Jennifer's body as the lead singer of the band in that movie. So I just really love watching him as well. I'm quite happy with uh, yeah. what they did with me. Dapper and sadistic. I've got some little heart eyes for Adam Brody, that's for sure. So I felt like this one would be kind of a good reprieve after watching Audition because that movie is so heavy that it's kind of nice to have a little bit of a lighter hearted or more funny movie after that one. So that's why I put it in the number five spot. Number six is Only Lovers Left Alive from 2013. A depressed musician reunites with his lover in the desolate streets of Detroit. Though their romance has endured several centuries, it is tested by the arrival of her capricious and unpredictable younger sister. So this is another one that I haven't seen and I'm kind of shocked that I haven't watched this one yet because it's been out for almost 10 years now. It doesn't say in that description but the characters that they're talking about are vampires so that's why they've had a centuries-long love affair. And it stars Tom Hiddleston and Tilda Swinton as our vampire couple and I could just watch those two literally just sit and talk about the weather. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm gonna like this one. I'm sure it's gonna be great. And I also just like vampire movies in general and I feel like a lot of times they're really injected with very poignant relationships and love and especially for this one where it's this couple who's been together for so long like literally hundreds of years so you can see how their relationship progresses and changes over time two hot vampires who are in a relationship who doesn't want to watch that so this is another one that I am very excited to be watching for the first time finally number seven is Cupid from 2020 it'll be a bloody valentine this year after being embarrassed by the mean girls at school, Faye, a practicing witch, summons the evil Cupid to take revenge on all those who wronged her. On Valentine's Day, Cupid does in fact rise and will stop at nothing until the walls are covered in blood. The students must figure out a way to stop Cupid and undo the spell before their hearts get broken, literally. This one is another one I haven't seen, and honestly, it looks pretty low budget. I mean, in that trailer, you can see that Cupid, he, he looks okay, you know, uh, you can tell that they they did what they could with the budget they had, but I'm really hoping that it's a diamond in the rough and it turns out to be one of those low budget movies that's actually pretty good. And it really seems to have a very strong Valentine's Day theme. And I just think Cupid as a monster or a villain is so interesting. And adding in the magical element, the witch element, I really, really like that idea. We'll see how it plays out. I'm very interested to see what they do with the story and how it comes off and how they do it with a pretty low budget. So this is also one that I had not heard of until I googled Valentine's Day horror movies and it came up. So yeah, we shall see how it is. It could turn into a new favorite. Who knows? <laughs> All right, we're halfway through the list. We are on number eight now. And number eight is The Love Witch from 2016. She loved men to death. Elaine, a beautiful young witch, is determined to find a man to love her. In her gothic Victorian apartment, she makes spells and potions and then picks up men and seduces them. However, her spells work too well and she ends up with a string of hapless victims. When she finally meets the man of her dreams, her desperation to be loved will drive her to the brink of insanity and murder. So I have seen this movie and it has been quite a while since I watched it, but I do remember thinking that it does run a little bit on the slow side. The story just takes a little while to get going and it's just a bit more of a slower paced movie but the visual aspects of this film are absolutely worth the watch we've got all of the very period authentic 60s style of things of our lead character Elaine's dress and her makeup and just everything about the movie from the costuming to the set design and the prop work and everything just all looks very authentically 60s and I just really love that about the film and and of course, the whole central theme of love and a witch who just craves love and makes love potions. So it's kind of perfect for Valentine's Day. And I just really like the lead actress, Samantha Robinson. She does a great job and she's so beautiful and just so compelling to watch. The director, Anna Biller, had total creative control of this project. I 
had to write down all of the things she did because she did so much in this movie. She directed, wrote, produced, edited, she did the music. Yeah, pretty much almost every aspect of this film was done by Anna Biller. So it was really a passion project for her. And you can really tell through the making of the movie, it's a very well-made film. I definitely would suggest watching this one for the visuals for sure. And the story is pretty interesting. But like I said, it's just a little bit slower, which is a bit more true to the 60s time period of film as well. So and with the title like The Love Witch, how could I not include it on this list? Moving on to number nine, and that is Hospital Massacre from 1981. You have nothing to fear until they operate. After making what should have been a routine visit to a local county hospital on Valentine's Day, divorcee Susan Jeremy finds herself detained for further observation. Meanwhile, a homicidal maniac disguised as a surgeon wanders around the hospital, killing all the staff members associated with her. This is another one that I haven't seen yet, but it is set on Valentine's Day, and it came out the same year as My Bloody Valentine. So I'm kind of just expecting a My Bloody Valentine set in a hospital with a doctor instead of a minor as our slasher villain. So I hope that it delivers the same kind of overt Valentine's Day feel that My Bloody Valentine is just so good at. So yeah, kind of just expecting a pretty standard 80s slasher with this one, but hopefully we'll deliver on the Valentine's Day aspect. Number 10 is Warm Bodies from 2013. Cold body, warm heart. After a zombie becomes involved with the girlfriend of one of his victims, their romance sets in motion a sequence of events that might transform the entire lifeless world. So this is another zombie-themed horror movie, and it's another one that I haven't seen. And it's not set on Valentine's Day, but it does have a central romance, like it said in the description. And the main actor who plays the zombie is Nicholas Holt, who he's actually from one of my favorite TV shows from the past couple of years, and that is The Great. He plays Peter in that, and he just does such a good job with the acting, but especially with the comedy in that show. So I'm very excited to see how he brings his comedic skills and timing to this movie. And he is significantly younger in this movie uh, since it was from 2013. But I'm kind of expecting, you know, in the same vein as Shaun of the Dead, a a zombie horror comedy type movie. So I am interested to see it and see how much it gives the lovey kind of feeling and all of that kind of stuff. So we've got vampire love stories, zombie love stories on this list, just all kinds of love stories for you. Number 11 is a very twisted kind of love story, and that is The Loved Ones from 2009. Don't break her heart. Lola Stone asked Brent Mitchell to the prom, but Brent said no, and now he's screwed. What happens when Lola doesn't get what she wants? She enlists daddy's help to throw a prom on her own, where she is queen and Brent is king. Whether he likes it or not, The Loved Ones is what happens when puppy love goes horribly, violently wrong. Brent should have said yes. So another movie with love in the title, and this is one that I have seen. It really surprised me. I ended up liking it a lot and feeling like, wow, this is way more brutal than I thought it would be. But there's a lot of things that really stand out and just kind of make me think of Valentine's Day. And it's partly Lola's super pink dress and the fact that she's going around literally carving hearts on people. So yeah, maybe not one that is set on Valentine's Day, but definitely one that's about some one-sided love and what happens when love is unrequited and the person who is jilted is a little off their rocker. And saying a little is an understatement. Number 12 is Picnic at Hanging Rock from 1975. On St. Valentine's Day in 1900, a party of schoolgirls set out to picnic at Hanging Rock. Some were never to return. In the in the early 1900s, Miranda attends a girls' boarding school in Australia. One Valentine's Day, the school's typically strict headmistress treats the girls to a picnic field trip to an unusual but scenic volcanic formation called Hanging Rock. Despite rules against it, Miranda and several other girls venture off. It's not until the end of the day that the faculty realizes the girls and one of the teachers have disappeared mysteriously. So The Loved Ones is an Australian horror film, and so is Picnic at Hanging Rock. I didn't really mean to put them back to back, but it just happened that way. <laughs> Picnic at Hanging Rock is such a different horror movie. I know there are probably people who wouldn't consider it a horror movie or don't consider it horror in any way, but it's just a very different kind of horror and it is so magical. It's so ethereal and mysterious and horrific in more subtle ways than the overt horror we see in a lot of other movies, but I still definitely consider it a horror movie and a brilliant one at that. The aesthetics of the this movie are just gorgeous. The cinematography is so beautiful. The set dressing and the costuming, just everything about it, it is so, so lovely to look at. And it's one that just really leaves you 
you with questions at the end, one that keeps you thinking after the credits roll. And for that, it's one that I will continue to go back to and that I will continue to recommend to people who haven't seen it because it is just that good. It's a Criterion movie for a reason. Um, I have not seen the TV remake, I guess you could call it, the TV series with, I think, is it Natalie Dormer? Is she in that? Uh... Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But it's definitely something that I would like to watch because I love the movie so much that, you know, if they do it justice in the series, I would absolutely watch it because the whole concept is just right up my alley. So I will consume more Picnic at Hanging Rock content if I can. <laughs> and we get the lovely little Valentine's Day cake in this. It's so cute, the little heart. So you definitely get a lot of Valentine's Day vibes from this one for sure. Number 13 for Valentine's Day Eve, I guess you could call it, <laughs> is Valentine from 2001. Remember that kid everyone ignored on Valentine's Day? He remembers you. Five friends are stalked by a mass murderer while preparing for Valentine's Day. I love that that description is so short and sweet and to the point because that is exactly the way the movie is. It's an early 2000s slasher. We've got some pretty big names for the time in there. Katherine Heigl, Denise Richards, and the main character is played by Marley Shelton who, for those who like the Scream franchise, you will know that she is Deputy Judy. So it's kind of a fun little connection to the horror genre and it's really fun seeing her in another horror movie, especially one that's such a fun slasher like Valentine. We've got some awesome Valentine's Day imagery in this. The killer in the Cupid mask is iconic, and the cheesy Valentines that they leave that are very rhymy, but also very threatening, so those are super fun as well. Journey of love is an arduous trek. My love grows for you as you bleed from your neck. This movie is by no means exceptional. It's not gonna rock your world as far as originality or plot or anything like that, but it is just a fun slasher that really leans into the Valentine's Day theme. So this is one that I'm gonna watch pretty much every year around Valentine's Day because it's so fun and it really just gets me in the mood for Valentine's Day. And I've actually got, I'm sure you've seen my little Valentine VHS right here. So maybe I'll watch it on VHS this year. And the last on my list, number 14, is of course the original My Bloody Valentine from 1981. Cross your heart and hope to die. 20 years ago in the sleepy mining town of Valentine Bluffs, a fatal mining disaster occurred on Valentine's Day while some of the crew was decorating for a party. The sole survivor of the accident killed the remaining crew members and warned the town not to celebrate Valentine's Day again. When a group of teenagers decides to defy that order, a murderous maniac in mining gear begins dispatching townsfolk in bloody and creative ways. I saved this for last because it is the number one most iconic Valentine's Day themed horror movie of all time. We've got the super cool killer design of the miner. We've got all of the fun 80s Valentine's Day decor everywhere. The Valentine's Bluff sign is iconic. That opening scene with the girl with the little heart tattoo. Just every inch of this movie is covered in Valentine's Day and I love it for that. And that's why I will continue to watch it every year and why it is my number one pick for this Valentine's watch list. So yeah, that is my 14 days of heartbreak horror list. I'm gonna include a download for the image of the list in the description of this video. So you can download it and save it to your phone or computer if you wanna reference it. And please let me know if you're gonna be following along with this challenge. I really enjoy doing these watch list challenges, especially for holidays. And I just loved holiday themed horror so much. So I was really excited to put this list together. But also let me know if there are any movies that I missed on this list that are specifically Valentine's Day themed or that you just think would fit in with the theme of love and heartbreak and all of that, please let me know in the comments because I always am looking to expand these lists. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on any movies that I might have missed. I'm thinking that my next video is going to be birthday themed since my birthday is the 16th of February. So I think I might do a review of Happy Birthday to Me because I haven't seen that one yet either. And that is one that I absolutely have to watch and it'd just be really fun to do it for my birthday. Keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks. I'm probably gonna end up doing another video before then, we'll see, uh, but I'll definitely try to drop the Happy Birthday to Me review on my birthday, so February 16th. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here with my little horror family. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic February and we'll talk horror next time. Bye.